Okay, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. And please post lots of comments and share it. And also, too, uh, please visit my YouTube page and uh, team up with me. And also, too, my God's Army page and my Google Plus page. Please uh, join those, okay? God bless you. We'll, we'll see you uh, later. Hello, I hope you can hear me. I'm going to share this on my Facebook page. All right, goodness. Thank you all for watching. Hallelujah. It ain't showing me nothing.
for posting that. If anybody else believes the same way as he does, please post a comment and let me know. Because uh, I think it's very important to work some of these things out. And don't get a don't get mad at me or offended, and uh, you know block me because you might uh, believe a little bit different. Because what uh, we need to do is uh, we need to go to the Word of God and we need to research these things out because this is a very, very important topic. We're talking about, you know, being saved. And, you know, some people, what they do is they, uh, when they say they're saved, uh, in their mind, they believe they have eternal security. And if you ask somebody, are you saved? And they will tell you, yes, I'm saved, I'm, bo I'm born again Christian, I'm going to heaven. So a lot of times people ask you, you know, uh, are you a Christian? They say, yes, I'm saved. So what, what they do, and I want to get it straightened out, what they do is they put saved in the place of eternal security. And what they do is they don't separate them. So saved, salvation, then eternal security. And, uh, you know, that is something that if we don't live to a certain level, the Bible plainly teaches that we're going to be weighed upon, uh, you know, our works, you know. And also, too, you know, uh, we're not going to be able to uh, have eternal security. But I'm going to I'm going to really uh, help you all today. And this really helped me. Because, see, I have a relationship with God. And uh, now, uh, I'm going to tell you a dream that I had last night about this very subject. And uh, that's where relationship and dreams and visions and a personal relationship with God through Christ Jesus really helps. Now, uh, in this dream, and... It was after I had got off the phone with somebody, and he was uh, stuck on this issue. And uh, But anyway, I had a dream. I went to bed, and I, I was praying before I went to bed. I said, God, you know, help me explain this, because I know that your Bible says, you know, faith without works is dead. So if, if we're, uh, if it's not by works, but through faith that we're saved. There's got to be a contradiction in the Bible. Because the Bible says faith without uh, works is dead. So, is there a contradiction in the Bible? No, there's not a contradiction in the Bible. What we got to do is line our understanding up with the Word of God. So, I had a dream last night. And in a dream, and I was playing a part of this guy. And I was back on in my uh, on my old piece of property and what had happened was i had and many of y'all can relate with this because many uh, y'all many of y'all watching are dealing with this right now you have an unpaid uh, ticket and you've done went to court over it but you was not able to pay the fine so it turns into a capious warrant okay so you have to either pay the fine when they catch you or you know set it out so but anyway now in a dream i was at a mailbox and I was checking the mail. Uh, uh, we used to live on Highway 175. And I was I walked across the street, and I was checking the mail. And, uh, you know, in the dream, I seen this 18-wheeler coming. But anyway, and this old car pulled up. And it was this undercover cop. And this old, old car. See, uh, they were after me because I owed a fine. So, now in the dream, what had happened was, after he seen me, he said these words, yes, that is him. But anyway, then right after that, a cop had pulled up, and they put me in handcuffs. Now, here is where the favor of God started coming in. I want to bring this out in the dream. Uh, instead of, I'm a bigger guy, instead of putting me in handcuffs, uh, you know, one set where it'd be really hard on my hands, what they did was they put me in two pair of handcuffs. So I had more wiggle room. And then we went from there to the uh, bookend station. And from there, uh, I just started crying out to God. 
And uh, I said, God, I don't want to be here. Help me. And I started talking in tongues. And I said, God, I praise you. Help me today. But anyway, and then what had happened from there was uh, this woman heard me. And then her exact words was, I've been, I've tried to help you, but for some reason, and I had the money on me to pay the fine. And for some reason, they could not go into the system and receive my money. It, it kept declining it. So now, but the lady said, I'm going to help you. Come with me. And then what she did was, and, and, uh, but anyway, and, and as she was doing that, and be, as this was taking place, I said these words, and listen to these words I said. I said, thank you, God, that we're going to work this out. Now, notice this. I said, thank you, God, we're going to work, okay, W-O-R-K, the same word in the Bible, that we're going to work this out. So, but anyway, and then, then she took me outside, and, and I was doing... Uh, some work on the jail. In other words, I was uh, doing some community service that uh, they was paying like eight dollars an hour. But instead of sitting in there for uh, you know a long time, what had happened was I was able to get out quicker, you know, and I was able to get my fine reduced. So now I want to apply this uh, to uh, Ephesians. Uh, Chapter, uh, let's see, uh, okay, Sa uh, chapter 8, because this is what they use, chapter 8, okay? Now it says, for grace, okay, which is favor, ye are saved through faith. Now let's apply that, okay. Now what, what had happened to me in the dream, okay, let's apply this to real time, by grace, okay? Favor of God came upon me in a situation in the dream. They put me in bigger handcuffs. As I was acknowledging God in my time of trouble, and they had begun to start helping me, because they knew better. I was a child of God, okay? So, by the favor of God entered in, okay, so what did he do? He began to save me. So, we need a savior. So, what happened was they began to help me get out of that situation, see? So, save, okay? And through faith, okay, faith cometh. Faith is believing in what God is doing, okay? So, faith without works is dead. So, and that's what many people do is what they do. They try to explain uh, uh, God intervening in your life without works, you know? You gotta have works and live for God. You know, that's a task. You gotta obey what God's telling you to do. So, but anyway, so, it's not... Uh, us through faith, so I had to believe in God's plan. Listen to me. I had to believe in what he was doing when he was saving me from that terrible situation. See, in, in my mind, saved means to rescue. Salvation was the end result of me getting my time reduced. I found salvation in, in, in the name of Jesus. See, okay, so now we we'll keep applying this. So now, now here's what they do in this, uh, in this view that they have. They only stop there at, uh, half that verse. But listen to this. It's a gift of God. Okay. So why did I get, why did I get, uh, why did I get, uh, help. It's a gift from God. Why? Because he loves me. He wants to keep me. So it's not nothing I've done. Now, here's where it goes on. Now, listen to me. For, uh, not, uh, for not of works, least any man shall boast. Now, here's what you need to understand what God was telling me. What that means, uh, it was not my idea. I had to be in the will of God. It was God's plan that he I had to be a part of that, okay? So I had to say, okay, I could not get up and tell that woman no. I did not want to resist her because I knew God was working through her. See, so when when you te when you testify to somebody, you got to give God the glory. God showed up. God put it on that person's heart, see? So not of yourself, least you may boast. So it wasn't me. I don't need the glory. God needs the glory. Now let's... Now let's apply what was going on in the dream to the, the next part, okay? All right, now, uh, verse 10, okay? 
now when when I acknowledge God's plan for here it says for we are his workmanship okay that means we we got to show Christ through us okay he's working on us created in Christ Jesus okay and that means we are acknowledging what he did at the cross and living his teachings now here's what they live out unto good works so when that woman offered me that position and offered her help, I could not stand up and I could not cuss her. I could not say, I ain't going to go out there and be your flunky. Duh, duh. See, I had to have a Christ-like attitude because, see, the Bible says what he's going to do is prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And believe me, the things that they was doing in the dream, they were out of their jurisdiction. See, they were trying to sucker me, see. So, but anyway, and I had the money to pay the fine in the dream, but they would not receive my money. So notice what had happened. The devil was trying to bind the strong man, see. So, now, okay, now if we continue on and keep applying this, now, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, notice it says that God before, and that means the situation, started at the mailbox. He ordained a plan for me to exit that terrible situation. So I had to get in his, I had to get in, in his will. See, I could not go outside of his will, and I had to take the necessary steps that he was, he was opening doors and shutting doors. See, now, God had ordained that we should walk in them. So that means in order to have freedom, in order to have God intervene in our, in our life, we have to uh, acknowledge him in all our ways and lean not to our understanding. Blessed are those that hear what God's saying. So when we do that, we are delivered from our terrible situation. And believe me, now, if you'll, if you'll really take this to heart like I did, and I, that's what you got to have a personal relationship with God in order to understand this because he will give you understanding. See, and the Bible says there in Job, in the middle of the night, God will whisper in a man's ear through a vision, through a dream to keep his soul from the pit. And he will open a man's understanding. So, now, if you don't understand what the difference is, okay, saved. Okay, is when you're going through a daily routine and you fall and you need God's help. Salvation is the result of the end result of that task that God has delivered you from. Eternal life is living God for God the way you need to live for God. And therefore, when you obey God and Jesus' teachings, what Jesus taught, obey God. Okay, and then when you are weighed, they're upon your works, whether they be good or bad. And when you live above the level of the Pharisees and Sadducees, you have eternal security. But the Bible says if you dash your foot against a stone, you can lose your salvation in the middle of a task. Okay, now separate that, okay, from eternal security. That means... If I was to dash my foot against stone, stone like Psalms 91 says, what would happen if I was applied to that dream I just told you, right in the middle of uh, maybe uh, me outside working for a daily uh, wage in order for me to receive my freedom quicker, what would happen is I would maybe try to escape. So if I tried to escape, what would happen is I would be dashing my foot against a stone because I am getting off of God's plan and trying to get on mine. See, so you can dash your foot in the middle of, of God trying to help you uh, get through something. And also, too, the Bible says he will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. So, sometimes we hinder that because what happens is, and that's happened to me, many times when God's trying to deliver uh, me from a financial blessing or maybe, uh, you know, heal me right in the middle of it. Here's what happens. The devil comes in, and you'll have somebody terrorizing you, somebody cursing you. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you a prime example of that. Uh, well, when when I was needing money to finish renting the motel, on my way back from Walmart, you know, in order to pack the stuff up and to go do the job, what had happened was there was this guy that uh, 
Uh, he got mad because he thought I cut him off. So what he did was he just started flipping me off and started cursing me. And uh, what had happened was, uh, you know, he stopped me right in the middle of the road and pulled up beside me. And he just started flipping me off. And what here's what I did. And I think I, think I might have had the video on my phone. So, and what had happened was, let me see if I got the video. What it was really, really, really something, and I can, I can prove this to you. That I don't tell stories. Let me see if I have it on my phone, but I know what I did was, was uh, I, being very smart and intelligent, I heard the voice of God. Here it is, right here. Yeah, sure did. I got it on my phone. Watch this. Watch. Look. I'm gonna prove it to you. This right here was on the way back. Let me see if it'll play. Watch. Let's go prove for you. Get saved. You never turn that bull outside that back. Go to Jesus, man. This happened to me. Bye. See him pulling up beside me, stopped me in the middle of the road, cussing me. See him? I don't know if you can see that good. But now here's what happened. I heard the voice of God, and he said, Mark, keep your eyes on me. This is the devil. He's trying to hinder your breakthrough. So what I did was I listened to God instead of getting out and, and, and dashing my foot against a stone where I would have got a ticket and maybe got put in jail for fist fighting somebody on the road. I heard the voice of God, and just like uh, I heard him tell me what to do, so I, I picked my phone up, and I said, listen here, buddy, I'm recording you. And see, what that did was when we heard the voice of God, it brought peace to the situation. The guy didn't want to be on camera and sweat off. But now, if I would have if I would have done uh, the the evil works, what would have happened was I would have got pulled over. I would have I would have gotten a fist fight, whether I would have won or lost. It really don't matter, you know. But, uh, you know, I, I only had an hour to get my stuff out. I would have been tied up over there for over an hour. See, and I and I would have missed the checkout time. All my stuff would have been out. I wouldn't have made it uh, to the next town to receive my breakthrough and for God to bring me from being saved to salvation. I would have dashed my foot against stone. So you got to be real careful because let me tell you something. The devil wants to hinder your salvation. He want what he wants to do. He don't want you to be led by God. He don't want you to, to be saved and have God give you a task. And he wants you to do it with a wicked attitude instead of an evil attitude. He wants to automatically lead you astray. So, and that just happened to me. And let me tell you something. And it tells you right here on this video that I just played you. Right here, it says, uh, let's see, it says the time. And it was March the 9th. See, if you see it right there, it's got the time above. I don't know if you can see that or not. But uh, right, right there in the top of the video... See, it says March the 9th, that very top video. That was Friday, okay? That was my checkout time, okay? And it was right before. So, that's what I'm saying. Many times, you're going through something, and God's trying to bring peace to the situation, and he's trying to bring you from being tormented and, uh, you know, uh, trying to get you from uh, point A, disease and what is happening is the devil comes in just like he did me and you know and just begin to terrorize you know, i ain't cut that guy off you know that guy just he he was just something else but i was on my way back because i went to the to the bank and i was trying to come back and they had to decline that car and i was going to, to go do that job you know and i was and it, you know it's just been a run i don't know if you need to go watch that video and understand what i'm saying but right as I was completing the task God uh, was wanting me to do, what had happened was the devil stepped in. And here's what you've got to do. If you're needing a financial miracle or maybe you're needing to be delivered or maybe you need something in your life or that your kids need to be delivered from drugs, whatever, I don't care. It don't matter what it is. And maybe you need better sight. Whatever the situation is, God's got a, he has ordained a plan for you, just like if, as long as you live for him, just like the Bible says here, see, just like it says here in the, in the, in the, in the Bible, right here, it says, 
and and this is what see what the, what men but the devil wants to do use man man to tell you well it's not you but see you know you just sit there and do nothing see he don't want you to listen to God now if you if you read this right here you know in uh, verse uh, 10 listen to this for we are workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works that means a Christ like attitude and that's what I demonstrated there now you notice I told you God to get saved go to Jesus you need Jesus did I witness to that dude Right in the middle, I cried out to God, see, and he told me what to do to it. And many of y'all are facing road rage, I'm telling you, if you, if, you just, if you just do that, put them on camera, many times they'll, they'll drive off. Okay, now listen, which God before, okay, that means before uh, uh, you're going through your situation, as it begins, he has already, what say, ordained, okay, ordained a plan for you. Now, now listen now here. Now, the definition of ordained is to prepare before. So he's already prepared a way out for you right, in the, right as that has been happening to you. But you've got to walk in it the way he wants you to walk. And the Bible says, the blessed are those that hear what the voice of God is saying. So therefore, when you get on his plan and get off your plan, and you'll walk to walk and talk to talk, I promise you, you'll be... You'll go from from point A to Z, and you'll get you'll get delivered each, each and every time from your terrible situation, and you'll find you'll find salvation. You'll you'll have salvation on a daily basis, and then now once as you begin to continue to grow in God, now automatically don't get me wrong, don't not get me wrong. Okay, once you sat there. And you acknowledge God and tell him to come into your life through Jesus and all, you know, and you are sincere in your heart. What happens from there? He gives you a clean slate. Okay, you have a clean, listen to me, you have a clean slate. Okay, you start over, you become a new creature. Now, many of y'all are dealing with certain issues. Okay, now... Then what happens is the Holy Spirit begins to convict you and bring things to light, okay? And you have trouble getting delivered from those sins. So here's, it's not going through a rehab. What happens is you've got to go through a transition period, whether it be one day, supernatural, or whether it be a year-long process. So what happens from there, okay, God will begin to give you a plan that's for you that he will start delivering you from the indoctrinations and also to all the things that you're dealing with that is contrary to the word of God. So you will start off new, okay? But listen to this, okay? Now, if and the Bible says that if you were once in line, there is a possibility, okay, that, just like the Bible says, that if you let interference, like this guy, come in, you know, and maybe you're invited to a bar or a sex club, and what you do is you make the decision you're not going to live for God no more, and you're just going to forget all about that prayer. What happens is, and you're not acknowledging God and trying to do right, and you just completely shun it, and, and then he now catch this, and this is if you be start. F you, God, you know, we'll start blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Ah, I was an idiot. You begin to put him to an open shame, okay? That is where then you've got to go back and you've got to start over. And then you've, and it's, you've got to begin, you know, to, uh, you just, you just lose out, you know, because the Bible says clearly that he, that the, the wheat and the tear, he's going to separate. He begins to, you know, uh, change. And, and also too, my, 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 my very good friend, uh, that I have met here lately. And, and now, now at the time of this video, uh, I, there's going to be many debates to come up and please, uh, watch those, okay? So, now, uh, just be keeping an eye on that, and there's always debates. I know the video is going to continue on, so I'm not going to tell you who, but there are debates on a daily basis just about, so just uh, uh, take it at that. Now, if I go over here, and I believe this is where, uh, if you go to First John uh, chapter 3, 
Okay. And I need to, I need to go to uh, the Strong's King James. So, and I'm gonna go to First John, uh, chapter three. And uh, I think this is where it needs to be. Okay, right here. Yeah. And I'm just gonna read. Uh, uh, starting at verse 1, it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. Okay, so behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. So that means he loves us. He wants to help us. He don't want to see us out there starving, okay? Uh, anyway, for what manner of love for the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Notice when you enter into the faith, you become a son of God, okay? Uh, therefore, the world knew us not. Why? Because the Bible says, be of God and not of the world, okay? Now, okay, so, uh, because he, because they knew him not, because it knew him not, beloved now, uh, are we the sons of God, and it doeth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. No, no we got to be like him. Okay? For we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath hope in him pureth. Now listen, that's not purified. That's pureth. That means it's an ongoing process. So when you're in, in Christ Jesus, you are going through a transition period. You are being purified, okay? That means you go through deliverance, okay? So uh, purify himself even as he is pure, okay? That means he's without sin, see? Okay. So whosoever committeth sin, and listen to this, whoever so committeth sin, also also the law, okay, uh, whosoever sin whosoever committeth sin transgresses against the law. Okay, now listen to this. For sin is transgression of, of the law. Okay? So, and ye know that he was manifested to take away your sins, okay, in him, in his son, who abideth in him, sinneth not, whosoever sin hath not seen him, neither knew him. So, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous, okay? He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth in the beginning, uh, okay? So, I understand what that's saying, okay? So, we're going to go through a process of change, plain and simple. We, go, we are beginning to get processed. And there are some people that they think, that God mailed, uh, that God nailed Moses' law to the cross. And that is not true. What had happened was what, the law changed because of Jesus. Okay? So, uh, if you are sinning against the law, then that's really something. Let me tell you something else, too. And my buddy also, too, uh, brought this out. If you go to Matthew, okay, chapter 5. Okay, and many of y'all need to do this. You need to research this stuff because many of y'all are walking in sin because people's telling you things have passed away. And, you know, it's really not true. But if you go to Matthew chapter 5, okay, and if you go to, uh, let's see here, uh, 17, okay, and it says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophet. I am not come to, to destroy it, but to fulfill it. And that word, Right there, what it is translated everywhere else in the Bible to teach. He has come to teach the law. So what is happening is, and and some of the things in the Bible is just mistranslated because it's just a satanic trick. You know, and that's how come they come out with so many diff different translations of the Bible, and they begin to leave things out. Now, my goodness, it, it's ridiculous. There is not that many words in the English language for them to keep translating the Bible. They keep leaving things out. So, I, I understand what he did. Jesus didn't come to build law. He came to teach the law. So, and that's the way that word should have been translated. It's translated everywhere else in the Bible except that one place. Now, that is just a mistranslation. So, he come to teach the law. So, now, I understand. And then it says, then it talks about the to heaven and earth pass away, that everything, you know, comes heaven and earth and stuff like that. So, you need to go back and you need to really research the word. Because I know you're going to have to come up with accountability for the things and the way that you're living. And let me tell you something. And, and if, if that view 
was true, well, what happened is, you know, what was the purpose for Jesus coming to the earth? You know, uh, when he came, we should have all just wrapped up and, and went to be with him if we was all going to have a get into heaven free card, you know, and a, a pass from hell. No, he demands righteousness out of us. He demands us to live a certain way. He, it's just a commandment. You know, and you know, and if you're new, you know, just go through the process, the the process of change, and you got to be delivered. And but once you do acknowledge God and believe, and begin to read the Bible and listen to Him, and you keep your eyes single, what happens is you start out with a clean slate. Okay, all right. But you can fall away if you let satanic people come in your life and lead you away. So that's the proper interpretation of the Bible. So we've got to live a certain way. And then if you'll do that, you'll have mysteries of the gospel. You'll be delivered from many sins, and you will be saved and find salvation every day. See, God will begin to work in your life, okay, through Jesus, and you'll have that rakanda boil out there. You'll be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You're working on nine gifts, and you'll help people. So, but anyway, now... Uh, now, anyway, now, I'm just going to take a minute, and I'm going to pray for people. So, if you're dealing with this, and you want to be helped, I'll just do a quick prayer, and ask God to help you, okay? So, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for these people watching this video, and the people that are going to watch in the future. God, you begin to open up their understanding, Lord, and you begin to uh, help them understand things through dreams, and with your voice, God, begin to open up their understanding, and God, you bless them, and help them, God, when they live for you, Lord, you, you reveal yourself to them, and we bind, we bind all foul forces of the dead of the devil that comes in and tries to hinder their breakthrough like that man did to me, Lord. Lord, we take authority, and if they're going through uh, something, Lord, that they, they are trying to get the help from a certain situation, we bind the devil from uh, coming in their life. And God, we thank you that you're going to light up them fiery darts of the enemy, and you're going to deliver these people. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay, so just have faith and continue doing the task that God is helping you do because he's already ordained it from the beginning of your terrible situation has already gave you a way out. You just got to listen to him and do a Christ, have a Christ-like attitude and, and do his will, not your will, okay? That's what the Bible says too, lean not to your own understanding, okay? So don't lean to your own understanding. Do it his way. And I have to do that too in my life. And sometimes the Lord uses that, you know, we come out of the fire smelling good, you know, and then we have supernatural stories to tell. So that's what that's supposed to uh, do. Now, I'm going to also post this video on YouTube. And down below in the box, I'm going to post a link to my Google uh, Plus page and uh, God's Army page. So uh, y'all can visit that, okay? And, uh, and also, too, if you ever want to do a discussion or, uh, or debate, just send me a personal message. I'm, I'm open to that. And also, too, I always be looking on my on my God's Army page and my Google Plus page because I will always be posting times of uh, debates between different individuals because we have got uh, a group together on Facebook, and we're going to have a lot of good discussions, even though some of us have different beliefs, okay? So we're going to have some fun, and it will help you study the Word. Okay, so God bless you. I'm going to end this video, and I really hope y'all enjoyed it. And I hope that I helped y'all understand uh, a little bit more better what that, what the true meaning of Ephesians chapter 2. Okay? All right. Bye-bye.